Today I'm going to do a pretty cool video on how to make a Pua Abalone shell ring just like this one. It's probably a lot simpler than you think. It doesn't require a ton of tools or a lot of expense and you can make a really nice ring. Uh, probably worth a lot if you sell these things. So I'm going to show you what I need to do to make this and what, I, what tools I use. And then I'm going to go through the steps on how we do it. It's going to be pretty cool. So I've got a little makeshift workstation here. And I'm gonna show you what I need to make this ring. It's a fairly simple project. So for actually making the ring, I need the ring. Uh, this is a channel ring. Uh, you could use a flat ring with outsides, but the channel ring makes it much easier for this type of application. We have these in every size and width you could imagine at Turner's Warehouse, shamelessplug.com. And uh, that's not the full address. <laughs> I'm using this uh, UV resin. UV resin hard. I got it on Amazon a while back. Uh, I've been using it and using it and it still feels like it's full. So that is pretty good. I need my flashlight, which I'll grab in a minute. It's a UV flashlight to cure the resin. Uh, I'm gonna use a little nail polish. This is just straight black nail polish for the background because I'm gonna paint the background. And then I need my inlay material. In this case, I'm using Pua Abalone Shell. This is from Easy Inlay. Uh, we have these little two ounce bottles that you can see there. Uh, this will do a million rings. I don't know how many really, but a lot. You, you'll use this for all kinds of stuff though once you use it because it's really cool. Uh, after I'm done inlaying and using the resin on it, I will go to the lathe where I'll need a mandrel. In this case, I've got my mandrel in a Morris Taper collet chuck because I use that on my little polishing lathe. And it's really cool, these just go on here. You tighten it up gently, and you have a perfectly round spinning thing that you can now sand and polish. And if you were turning, you could even turn it on there, but in this case, we're just gonna sand and polish. And that is it. So for setup and tools, it's pretty simple. Let's get started on making the ring. A Couple things I forgot to mention, you'll need some scrap paper to put your resin on uh, so you don't get it all over your table. You'll need a paintbrush or you could use a, a toothpick or something small to essentially get little drops of resin on. Uh, a pair of tweezers. And I do like to use these magnifying glasses. Um, I find it just makes it a lot easier for me to see the stone when I'm putting it in place. And I can use just my naked eyes, but they sure make it a lot easier. So let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is paint the channel. I've just been using straight black nail polish and you wanna shake it up really good. Nail polish when it dries seems to be pretty tough. That's why I've been using it. And I wanna paint the channel. Um, I don't have to be super careful. If I get on the outside of the ring, it won't matter because I'm gonna sand and polish it off anyways. One thing I do wanna make sure I get is the inside wall of the channel. If you get some of it, but not all of it, you'll have little silver or stainless steel uh, peeking through, which won't necessarily, it won't look great. I mean, it probably wouldn't look that bad, but it's just better to be consistent and have a nice even black. Now you want this good and thick. So if you need to do two coats, do. Try not to put a super thick amount on at the start because you don't want big globs of it. You want it to lay down flat but you can always go back and add a little more if it is too transparent. The stainless steel tries to show through the black paint. So once you've examined the walls, make sure you got it all. And you may wanna wear gloves when doing this because I always seem to paint my fingers. But that is how we paint the channel. Now, we are gonna let that sit. Luckily, I prepared a different one before this. So now I can start placing my stone. And this is a fairly simple thing. It just takes a little practice. I like to spread out my stone on the table here. And you'll see the reason being is you're gonna be looking for, it's almost like you're looking for puzzle pieces, so to speak. So I put a drop of resin on my paper and it can just kind of sit there. It won't do anything until I cure it with the UV flashlight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my paintbrush. And like I said, you could use a toothpick or anything else. I'm just getting a drop 
and I'm just going to put a dab on there. And I'm just dabbing it in the channel. Might be a little hard to see, so I'm kind of trying to describe it. But basically, I've got a drop in the middle of the channel. Now, I want to find a piece of stone. In this case, I'm going to grab kind of a big one and drop it right on there. Now, I like to do the first one. If I had a lot of resin around it, I would try to fill that with stone. But because I barely put any resin in there, it kind of dropped and squished out just a hair. I can now cure it with the UV. So I'm going to turn on the flashlight. And this first one, especially, but all of them, I want to get as much as I can around the sides, on the top. And I'm just going to do that. I'm going to hold it on here for 10 or 15 seconds. I'm going to let it sit for a sec. And then I'm going to put it back on. Now keep in mind, as you work your way around this ring, you're going to keep putting the light on it. So you're going to kind of keep curing spots as you go. Now, what you can see, if I take my tweezers, see that? It's in place. I can't knock it out of place. I'm, I'm hitting the stone. It's stuck. So by using the UV resin, I could do this with CA or 5-minute epoxy. I would just have to wait in between, which isn't a big deal, but the UV resin makes it a lot nicer for working quickly. Now, one thing I just messed up doing because I was showing you is I had the flashlight over my pile of resin here, so it's kind of gelled now. So when I do my flashlight, I kind of want to pull it into a different spot. I don't want to hold it over my resin. So that's why I made that super rookie mistake to show you not to do that, right? Now, the next ones, I'm going to put more resin and I'm going to kind of squeeze it around that stone. I'm not going to go very far. I go about a quarter of an inch at a time. So the reason I've got my, my glasses on here, my magnifiers, is because I want to put my drop of resin in. And I like to go about a quarter of an inch at a time. And then I'll find a piece and place it. And then usually you have to find some smaller pieces to go around the bigger pieces, which is fine. It's kind of cool because this resin is soft until we cure it with the light. So I'm just kind of wedging pieces down in it. And then I can get a little piece for the side. Perfect. And what's cool is this stuff is you know, it's, it's essentially glue. So if I thought a shell piece was loose, I could put a little more resin on top of it or below it and then cure it. And by hitting it with this light now, it's going to not move. So now I don't have to worry about if I tip it over that they're going to fall out or that my glue is not dry and it's starting to move. So by using the resin, it makes it much faster. Now I'm just going to repeat this all the way around the ring until it's completely full. Then I like to go back and make sure I didn't miss any spots. Uh, with the black background, you'll see the black so you can like stick a piece in there. And I'm going to go around and do that and then I'll come back and we will show, I'll show you how I do the uh, top fill of the resin.
So I've gone all the way around the ring. Now, what, what I run into, and I, this is the same if I do the shell or the, um, the opal. I'm trying to remember what I'm saying here. And I'm an excellent artist drawer, so please feel free to love these drawings. So this is the ring, and this is where we're putting the shell in. And what we end up with is, um, you know, we got the, whew, that's a good one. See how symmetrical they are? Because I'm so skilled. So we've got the shell pieces down here, you know, below, but we need to fill up the channel of the ring. So what I'm going to do is put resin in, and I'm going to kind of build it up and cure it, and then build it up and cure it. And my goal is to do that last there. I want it to kind of arc over the flatness of the ring rails. If this was the ring, I want to kind of have my resin just like going like that. And the reason being is if I tried to make it flat and then I sanded it, I would have little low spots and little dips. And the reason I know that is because that's what I did when I first started doing this with different things. And so now I like to build it up a little high. Once this resin is cured, um, it sands and polishes really well. So there's, there's no reason not to build it up and then sand it down to the nice, even, smooth finish. So you can see this ring is flat across the channels, and that's because uh, I sanded it down to the channel. You don't have to worry with these stainless steel cores. You don't have to worry about sanding them. You can sand them and polish them just like the rest of the ring, so it actually comes out really nicely. So... I hope you enjoyed those wonderful drawings. What I'm going to do, put a little resin on here, and I'm going to go, I'm going to kind of work in the same fashion. I'm going to put drops, and I'm going to start with a smaller drop first, and I'm going to cure it, because if I don't, I'm applying a lot of resin here. If I tried to work all the way around the ring and then cure it, it would, it would drip on me, because it's, you know, it's liquid. But now, after that cure, it's not, it's hard. So I'm just going to keep building as I work around this and make sure I'm over the edge of the ring. Now what's cool is this ring is actually getting warm and it's getting warm because it's curing resin. I'm curing resin on it. Um, so I know that it's curing because I can feel it heating up on my finger. So that was a little low spot that I saw and I like to look I like to rotate it and look through my magnifiers just to see if I missed anything I believe I've gotten all my low spots I'm at least above the rim all the way around so I am going to go let this sit in the sun for a few minutes and then I will meet you on the lathe where we will polish this bad boy up and finish it up Okay, so we are back on the lathe. The ring sat outside for a little while and got nice and cured. Uh, you can see it's a, it looks a mess. It's got the black all over the edge, just like my fingers. Uh, the beauty is, much like a um, pen blank or a wood turning project, once you turn the item, you really kind of bring out its beauty. It's, can, it can go on the machine a little ugly, and then it, uh, it gets much better as time goes on. So this mandrel, we have two options. We've got the Pro and the Crafter. To be honest, I don't remember which one this is because I probably grabbed whatever was in stock. These are made up in Canada by uh, a precision machinist who does a lot of ring stuff, and they are really awesome. You don't have to have this. You could make wood blocks and cones that hold it, but I'm telling you, if you can afford this, do it because it makes it so much easier and so much better. Now, this process is pretty simple. It can take a few minutes because of the, the time to sand this down. I've got some 600 grit wet dry paper. And you'll see I'm just tearing off little pieces. My zona is cut smaller than normal because I only use this zona for one ring. And the reason being is I'm going to be hitting the stainless steel. So as I'm sanding and polishing, I'm going to get metal dust or 
metal dust or metal fibers in my my material. So I want to do this. I'm going to turn it on, and I want to keep this wet. But I also have my my water bottle that I can kind of squirt on it. So initially, I'm just kind of getting it round because I've got some highs and lows. When I was applying it, it's it's uneven. I just was trying to get above the rim. And as I go through, this will you'll start to see the resin dripping. So it, it looks a lot like if you were sanding a resin pen blank, how the water drips white. But I like to keep it wet, one for heat and two for shine. I'm a firm believer that wet sanding is always better. Oh. So I guess I didn't push my mandolin enough. And you can use a uh, bar to lock that. I just don't have one ready for it. But anyway, so I'm just sanding. I'm just trying to get that, that resin nice and even first. I'm going to move it around a lot on the paper because it does build up in the paper. It kind of gunks it up. So you don't have to keep it hosed, just, you know, dribble it every now and then to keep it wet. And fairly quickly, you'll start to see and even feel, if you put your finger on it, that it's starting to feel really smooth which is a good sign because that means we're getting it down to being flat across. And I never want to push in and create a, a concave. I always want it to be convex if I can control that. So I'm not pushing in the center, I'm kind of going around it with a little curve on my finger. Pressing with very light uh, pressure. And so now if I stop this, You'll see it's still messy, still has paint on the sides, uh, still has some high spots, but it already feels really smooth. So I just have to keep going a little bit more. And if I wear out this paper, I just grab another little piece. You don't want to be uh, super frugal on your sandpaper because you don't want to you don't want to cut grooves into it by having a lot of dust built up in your paper. So I'll just tear off another little sliver, get it wet and then just keep going. And just in case my mom is watching, shout out to my mom. She sometimes watches these and comments, so I won't tell her I gave her a shout out, but she'll let me know if she sees this, I guess. We'll see if she actually watches my channel, huh? But anyway, this is uh, just a couple minutes of this. The whole process is really very simple. It doesn't take a long time. Now, if there were certain high spots you couldn't get, you know, you can always spend a little second kind of getting them. But most of the time, I don't find that I need to do that. So I'm just going to hit the sides here, make sure I got all the paint off. Because I'm going to polish this whole ring from side to side. And it's going to look really good. And I can rinse it off and I I don't start polishing until I've checked the ring to make sure I don't have any low spots or any pits like a bubble or anything and sometimes you do have to dry it to see that so I'm gonna dry it off real quick and I'm just kind of examining as I go around making sure it looks even and flat and it looks good so now I'm moving on to Zona because this ring is flat and smooth. Zona is what I use to polish. There's six grits. So we're just gonna go and order these six colors. Like I said, I'm only gonna use this for this ring. And then I'm gonna, when I'm done with a grit, I'm gonna go ahead and toss it. And what you can see is I'm kinda going on the sides here to polish, and I'm going across the resin. I am keeping it wet. I could dunk it, but I like to squirt the bottle on it too. And even with just the first grit of Zona, you're going to see when I stop this, you're going to see how quickly that starts to shine. I mean, that's just the first grit and it looks crazy shiny. Now, of course, it is still wet. That helps. But this stuff is awesome. It's all I use for pens anymore. And I'm just getting both sides. I'm getting the outside here. And once I'm done with this grit, I'm going to toss it. And then I go to the next one. 
And then I'm just going to repeat this, kind of doing the same thing for all six grits. This is the final grit, the last one here, the white. So I'm gonna spend a little extra time getting the sides, getting the top, the surface. And then I'm even gonna turn it off and kinda of swirl it, make sure I don't have any, any rotation marks, which by this point you really shouldn't. If you do, you need to go back to the other grits. But let's take a look. Let me zoom this way. Let's take a look at this sucker. Oh, quick bath there. Let me dry it off. Just a cotton cloth. But look at that thing. I will say it is very hard to get a good video of these. But that is it. Isn't that amazingly simple? That's a pretty cool one. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Hope everyone is doing well and staying safe at home. Feel free to place an order for any of these parts if you wanna make one of these, cause we are shipping daily. And this is a great project, very simple, yet it's one of those projects that's kinda of too simple for how amazing it comes out. It feels like there should be a lot more uh, work to make something this cool. But anyway, hope you enjoyed. Please give me a thumbs up and like the channel and visit Turner's Warehouse for any of your wood turning, pen making, or ring making supplies. Thanks for watching.